blessed Sunday. Dear siblings, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining me here for worship, word, and prayer on this blessed third week of Advent. And as we begin today, let us begin with the scripture from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3a. When God's people were surrounded by hardship, suffering, and grief, Isaiah proclaimed, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted and proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn to provide for those who mourn in Zion. To give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit. We come today as people who are also surrounded by suffering and grief. And yet the Spirit hovers among us, tending and anointing, inspiring freedom where there is captivity, declaring blessing in places the world has cursed, and igniting fierce joy where mourning and heartache prevail. We wait as people who experience hardship and pain, Yet we are called to witness to the persistent joy that sustains our life as God's people. We light these candles as a sign of our shocking hope, just peace. And fierce joy. May our lives shine with the fierce, tenacious joy of the light who lives in our hearts as we wait and work for the coming of God's kin and kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Now, dear siblings, let us pray. Joyful God, we give you thanks for the ways you renew us with joy. And for the joy we can bring to each other, we ask that in this Advent time of preparation, we may glimpse your gladness and hear your voice singing over us. Amen and amen. And our opening hymn is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Praise us to thy glory. Of- 
Jesus' throne, by thine own eternal Spirit, ruling all our hearts alone, by thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. Amen. And amen. Let us pray. God of hope, you call us home from the exile of selfish oppression to the freedom of justice, to the balm of healing and the joy of sharing. Make us strong to join you in your holy work as friends of strangers and victims, companions of those whom others shun, and as the happiness of those whose hearts are broken. May we make our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. We open our red hymnal, the 378, which is the light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness to the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man who comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world did, was made through him. And the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, and even to those who believe in his name. These were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We turn to 752, I sing for joy. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name. O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. For you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the works of your hand. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. Praise the name of the Lord, from the rising of the sun in the, to the place where it sets. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, their glory above the heavens. Praise the name of the Lord. Our next hymn is Jesus' name above all names.
blessed Redeemer, living Word, Jesus, loving Shepherd, vine of the branches, child of Amen. Amen. Turn into a blue hymnal now to our affirmation of faith. In the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, dead, and buried, descended into Hades, the third day rose again from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God Almighty. From thence they shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And amen. We open our Bibles this morning to start in the book of Psalm. We open to Psalm 126. Let us begin. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion... We were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Here ends our reading from the book of Psalm. We're going to jump over and continue in the book of Isaiah for our first reading today. And that first reading comes in the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses, one, <clears throat> verses 4 and verses 8 to 11. We're actually going to start with 3b. The planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities. The desolations of many generations. For I the Lord love justice. Hate robbery for burnt offering. 
I will direct their work in truth and will make with them an everlasting covenant. Their descendants shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the posterity whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for they have clothed me with the garments of salvation. They've covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks themselves with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Here ends our first reading for today. Thanks be to God. We open our blue hymnal once more to 122. The advent of our Lord. Who shall come in the fullness of time to gladden the hearts of men? Who shall bring new joy to the world and the poor and lonely defend? Who shall come on a cold winter's night when the world is hushed and still? Only the silent stars keep watch as a promise is fulfilled. Just as a child newly born shall come to a stable rough with sod, tis gentle Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the blessed child of God. We await them with reverent hearts, O come, Lord Jesus, come. Our next hymn is Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Set free, my 
my God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. Our God, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, the mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow the land forbid to shine but God who called me here below will be forever mine will be forever Dear siblings, let us pray. S siblings, as we joyfully await the glorious coming of the Christ, let us pray for the needs of the church, our community, and this world. Dear Lord, today we come to you humbled and saddened. Saddened by the devastation and destruction and genocides happening throughout this country and this world. We come to you this morning lifting up our dear siblings and our LGBTQIA to us plus community. We come to you lifting up our siblings in Palestine and Israel. We come to you lifting up our siblings in Ukraine. And we look to you, O oh Lord, that you would open the eyes and the hearts of those who are committing these horrible, hateful, hurtful acts, and that you would make them see the error of their ways in your glorious name. Lord, they are using religion as an excuse, but we all know it is a way of land grab or to eradicate a population. We also lift up to you today, Lord, our siblings who are sick and in need of your merciful healing hands to bless them. We lift up to you our sisters, our brothers, and our non-binary siblings. We lift up to you, Lord, those who are in need of your joy to bless their lives. And ultimately, God of joy and exaltation, we ask that you strengthen what is weak, enrich that which is poor, and give hope to those who are continuously living in fear. Look upon our needs this day, O oh Lord, and make us grateful for the good news of salvation. Keep us faithful in your service until the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives forever and ever within us. Amen. And amen. Let us continue into our hymnal to 680. In 
entitled Joy. Though the fig tree should not blossom, and there be no fruit on the vines, though the yield of the olives should fail, and the fields produce no food, though the flock should be cut off from the fold, and there be no cattle in the stalls, yet I will exalt in the Lord, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all. In view of your participation in the gospel from the first day until now, for I am convinced, confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Some, to be sure, are preaching Christ even from envy and strife, but some also from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition rather than from pure motive, thinking to cause me distress in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in this I rejoice, yes, and I will rejoice. Therefore, my beloved brother, in whom I long to see, my joy and crown, so stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. We open our Bibles once again to our second reading for today, and our second reading comes from the book of Thessalonians, the first Thessalonians, to be exact. Chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Let us begin. Rejoice always and pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things, hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, who calls you faithful, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And I ended up actually reading a little bit farther till the end of that section there. But here ends our second reading. Thanks be to God. Now, dear siblings, please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, leading us not to temptation, but delivering us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us continue forth in prayer. God of hope and compassion, just as John the Baptist came long ago in Judea to witness to your light, we remember that light that he heralds is the savior of hope. Sometimes it seems our world is determined to extinguish hope and light. We admit that there are times when we feel the darkness is just too prevalent, too strong, and hope is just wishful thinking. May we witness through our giving, not scarcity, and despair, but fierce joy, hope, and compassion. May we also witness through what we say and what we do in Christ's name, 
as we pray. Amen and amen. And dear siblings, if you feel so compelled to tithe with this ministry at this time, feel free to click on our link, get to our link tree, and you can tithe through that. Ultimately, if you're having trouble, you can always reach out and message us directly, and we can send you ways to tithe. Or you can shop our storefronts on Spring, sharing good news and the word through apparel. And ultimately, the little bit that comes in from that goes towards helping others as well. We now turn to our gospel for today. And the gospel of our Lord comes from the gospel of John, chapter 1, 6 to 8, and 19 to 28. Let us begin. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Now this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? That we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am. Then the voice of one crying in the wilderness, <clears throat> Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, Now those who were sent were from the Pharisees, and they asked him, saying, When they do, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor a prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. But there stands one among you whom you do not know. It is he who who, coming after me, is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. These things were done in Bethabara, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Here ends our gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And thanks be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns and died for us. And this brings me to our message for today. And our message for today is a message of joy. And I know for many of you who are keeping up with things going on amongst our country, things going on around the world, you're probably sitting there and saying, Pastor, how can we honestly speak about joy when there is so much horrible things going on around this world and within this country? And I want to get to that. We see in our gospel today that John admits to those who were sent that I am not the Christ that you are looking for. I am not the one sent from God, but I am the one to come before to bear the witness. How many of us can say that we are the ones to come and bear witness to blessings, to joys, to things in this world that should have the light shone on them? Whether it be shining the light on the things in this world that are horrible in hopes that we can make change and innocent lives can stop being lost. Or 
Are we bearing witness to things in this world to learn from so that these mistakes don't happen again and again and again as they so often do? In our reading in 2 Thessalonians, and I apologize for the little gap. I was trying to find the pet part I was looking for. We see in verse 21, it says, Test all things and hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now, that also means testing your faith. That also means testing what someone is going to bring to you. That includes what I bring to you. Now, I say this from a wholehearted perspective of there are those who walk in the name of Christ and do not act as though they walk in the name of Christ. They don't listen to their own scripture, yet they want to use it as black and white to use for condemning others. In the spirit of joy, the book was never designed or was supposed to not be designed to be yielded as a weapon, but to be yielded as a way of self-reflection and examining. Thus, when we test all things and hold fast to what is good, we are testing what someone is saying. And if someone is saying that this book tells them to ultimately hate someone else and the whole hate the sinner sin not the sinner is a load of garbage it's a escape goat it's a cop out to sit there and say i really do despise and hate those individuals for absolutely no reason but someone told me to with that said if we test those things by the gospel of our Lord and our gospel of our Lord says that we are supposed to do what? Love our neighbor and love God. Love all of God's creation is basically summed up what we are told to do. And if you test what you're being told by that notion, how then? Are we not looking at this and saying, this is not Christ-like. This is not what we are called to be doing and seeing. This is not how we spread joy into a world that so desperately needs it. And I also wanted to go back into our hymnal today. Because as I was reading through this, It dawned on me that there are those, and I'm going to read this passage again. It says, some, to be sure, are preaching Christ even from envy and strife. And some are preaching Christ from goodwill. And this goes back to Thessalonians about testing all things. And to hold fast to what is good. What is good aligns with what Christ, Christ taught us. What is not good does not align with what Christ taught us in the Gospels. What Christ gave us as the ultimate command is what is good. Anything that does not align with that is not good. Let us continue back in that hymnal passage, though. It says, the latter do it out of love. So those who preach about Christ from goodwill, do it out of love. Do it out of compassion. Do it to spread hope and joy and peace into this world. (laughs) 
The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition rather than from pure motives. Huh. So those who are preaching Christ out of envy and strife are preaching for selfish ambition. Yep, sounds about right. When we look at things and we look at Christianity in today's world, in today's world with our country setting, we see many preachers out there preaching from their own selfish ambition rather than preaching the word of Christ, a word of love and compassion. And some of you might say, Pastor, how do we change that? How do we go about that? Well, we have to do what scripture is telling us to do, which is to test all things and to hold to what is good. And a preacher preaching Christ from a selfish ambition, from envy and strife, is never going to use Christ as more than a mascot is never going to preach about Christ in a way that's going to bring joy truly into your soul where you feel the presence of Christ within you. Now, don't get me wrong. There are those that are going to sit there and preach because that is their political view that they're preaching on. But it's very quick and easy to tell the difference. And as we look at all the devastation happening each and every day around this world and in this country, these are the tools that we can use to help bring joy, not only back into our lives, but back into others' lives. When we sit there and see what's happening over in Palestine and Israel, if we ask ourselves, does this align with the gospel of love? The answer is no. When we see what's happening in Ukraine with Russia, and we ask ourselves, does this align with the gospel of love? The answer is no. When we test what is happening to our 2S LGBTQIA plus community here in the United States, against a preaching of Christ from a point of love. And we test that. Is it good? The answer is no. Dear siblings, we have the ability to read scripture, to read about joy, and to proclaim these things. Because, ironically, as our hymnal read, says only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that, rejoice. Yes, but Christ in truth proclaimed is a Christ of love. And Christ of love is being preach out of goodwill is being preached where when we are testing these things it is holding fast to what is good and when we are ultimately holding to what is good we are holding to that joy that comes from Christ Jesus. And I had said that I was going to give you that way to bring joy into this world through this message today. And that is it by holding true to what is good and by testing all things. And if you're wondering how we are to test them, we are to test them through the gospel of our Lord. We are to test them through Christ himself's 
commandments to love God and to love others. And to test it through John 3.16, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten child. Your scripture might say son. But he gave Jesus to die for all. Now again, if you are testing what you're seeing based on that, then there's only one outcome for way for you to live in this world, and that is that in a joyous relationship with Christ. That is within showing love and empathy and compassion for your fellow man. Because at the end of the day, we are all human in this world. So as I lurk to wrap up, I ask you, dear siblings, to remember the scripture from today. To remember that John the baptizer came as a witness to Christ Jesus. To bear witness of the light that Jesus will bring to this world. To bear witness to the joy that Jesus can bring to this world. And I challenge you to look to yourselves and to your hearts and say, if you are listening to someone preaching today, tomorrow, this week, Christmas Eve, and so forth, and they are preaching to you in ways of anything other than to love your neighbor with your whole being. I challenge you to test that. And if it's in the good light of what Christ has taught us. I challenge you to look at what you were being told from the pulpits and to test it against what Jesus has taught in Scripture. And may that help you find your place to not only complete joy through Christ in you, but that you will share that joy through Christ to the world. Our final hymn on this Sunday of joy is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Man no more may die, born to raise the 
sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to a newborn King. Amen. And amen. And now let us pray. Merciful God of peace, your work spoken by the prophets restores your people's life and hope. Fill our hearts with the joy of your saving grace, that we may hold fast to your great goodness and in our lives proclaim your justice in all of the world through our actions in your name. Amen. And now, siblings, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn their face toward you and give you peace. Siblings in Christ, go in peace. Amen and amen.